What's good, YouTube? And welcome to the house. It turns out even the biggest giants in the industry that buy and sell cards are waiting on the ban list. I talked to Troll and Toad because I actually wanted to do today's market watch like I have in the past, looking at their trending cards that usually surprise me because the trending cards on their hot buys come from their sales data, so they're cards that are actually moving through them. Well, they've got two today, and I reached out to them, and they told me, yeah, we're waiting for the ban list just like the rest of you guys. So, turns out, even giants have time to sit around and wait and not throw their money in. And I would be the same if I were still buying, selling, and trading cards. So, completely understandable. But they also did leave a note to check right back in after that ban list hit. So, you guys might want to do the same. It could get pretty spicy but let's move on to the buyouts that happened last night through slash through the day mulan glacia huh first off you, you guys that did this i remember this happened a while ago did you actually think the elemental sabers are going to have a huge impact on the meta instead of being a fun deck did you really and then did you forget that the special edition is coming and we have our reprint to Mulan Glacia well before the WCQ where everybody's safely going to have their hands on it in case it actually did do something. I'm, I'm, I'm seriously wondering here because the first buyout actually fell back almost to exactly where Mulan Glacia was previously sitting. So like, I, I really don't get the second volley on this buyout. If you were going to do this volley, you should have done it earlier, and then it still would have been crushed by the reprint. Uh, I, I'm slightly confused, bewildered, and they're trying to hold the line again. People aren't going to want the secret rare that bad. Even if you're looking at Mermel Atlantean fully hollowed out decks, this isn't like an ultimate rare Tius. This isn't like a secret Megalo for the decks. And even if it was, its market price was already nearly where it should be for that. I, I think this is one of the not as good buyouts overall, in my opinion. Gishki buyouts. We're in 2K18, boys. Now, I actually have become a bigger fan of the Gishkis over time. I know it kind of has a cult following as a deck, and it's pretty darn fun. But at the same time, I don't think it's going to suddenly become the most viable thing in the world. And DT Gishki Zeal Gigas has, for no reason, <laughs> gone up to $15. And it's not just this platform, uh... Over here on eBay. Let, let, let's refresh. Make sure. Make sure. Oh, 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 yeah. Okay. I don't know what's going on. They didn't go for any other Gishki cards like Aquamere, which would go hand in hand with this. They they just went for the big boy. I'm a little confused. The Deva Rituals are coming out, and they can be pretty good. They, they actually equal exactly 10. So it is a level 10 ritual that works very, very well with those, since you need exactly 10 with the Gishki spells. But... Why, why go for just one piece of the equation? Why would you not go for all of it if you really have been testing and think the Debbie Rituals are going to break it? And the, the Secret Rare is a little bit up, actually, as well, versus market price. It is what it is. If you really think the Debbie Rituals are going to break this in, I hope I'm saying that right, too. The, they're basically the Ritual guys that are going to come out later with the Demise cards that uh, are generic Ritual support and put their bodies on board relatively with ease and get you stuff out of the deck. Uh, I, I don't know about this one as being the deck for it, but it is cute. And I do see where you were coming from. Just why only one piece of the equation? Why? Go, go for more. Go for broke if you're going to go with it and have confidence, in my opinion. All right. The Megaton promos came. And I think the more important discussion is that we have, if it's continuing on the pasturing, 11 secret rares left. And I got so much backlash last year. Oh, we're only going to have 15 secrets in the Megaton. No, John, there's no way. That only thing happened last year. It's happened twice in a row now, so we can somewhat safely assume that it's only going to be 15 secrets in our Megatons, 15 Ultras, etc. So well, now we play the game of what's going to be missing, and Ash Blossom's on the top of my list. I have every single set that's going to be in the Megaton pulled up here, and there's only 11 secret slots left versus 28 potential secret rares to put in. And I, I, I hope, I hope along with the rest of you guys, 
that Ash Blossom becomes a promo for the tin similar to Ghost Ogre. Even with its multiple printings, it will maintain a relatively decent price on all of its current values as shown by Ghost Ogre if it is a tin promo. I don't think it will end up in a slot in the tins itself as a secret rare rarity, but I could be wrong. I truly do hope it's a promo, but we could see it missing similar to Crystal Wing from Battles of Legend, which was completely absent from the tins, but Battles of Legend's ratios made that actually not such a bad thing diagram yes is in there tornado dragons one that i'm a little scared on because we did get theseus but if i'm correct we were missing one of our other boys i believe it was vermilion mech uh so uh, one of the tcg exclusives was missing we got a synchro axes fusion um what am I missing there? We got Theseus, we got the Vermilion Mech, we got the Tornado Dragon. But my point is, it could be in there, it could not. And if it's missing, I, I expect this to start to trend back up. Not too long ago, this was $20, market price 17 And we could easily see it trend back up if it's missing. But I would hope between Battles of Legend and the Megatons that we do see a reprint for it. Masterpiece wasn't mentioned, but Masterpiece tanks anyways people are assuming it's either hit or not in the tens or it's either hit and not in the tens or it, it will be in the tens because diagram is there to go along with it and then other cards i i feel like zark will be in the tens for sure i feel like ultra ultra polymerization that feels like a 10 card Unending Nightmare could be missing, but I, that's another card I'd like to see actually kind of in Battles of Legend despite its already cheap price, similar to Anti-Spell Fragrance last year. So no clue if it'll get one between either, but I, I have a feeling that it would be missing from the tins. It doesn't scream Mega Tins to me. Firewall, I would hope between the two gets touched there. Trickstar Reincarnation, I feel like it should be. Topological Bomber Dragon, a big boss, maybe. Ningirsu falls in an odd place. Will they put all the world chalices in there or no? Will they fill slots with that? There's no real way to tell. Same with the Trick Stars. Will they fill multiple slots with the Trick Stars or will they pass because of Star Pack? I actually have no answer for that and, and my theory with it. Like, I feel like they're not going to hit the Trick Star cards again, but they straight could because it's a popular anime archetype. I really don't know what Konami's mind with that one. And uh, we see other ones like Rescue Ferret, could be, couldn't be. Guy Saber, probably. Uh, it's a Link Monster, a Link 3, Lumina. Like, there's so many secret rares. It's crazy. Ah, our big boys. We'll talk about you specifically in a second. Oh, and a card randomly going through the set that I thought about. Marionette. I'm actually surprised it's only at 4 for the Ultra. I get that it got a Star Pack reprint, but I figure people would want the Ultra. That's that's pretty crazy. I, I feel like the Vindred, similar to the Spirals, will be completely missing, so I've kind of taken them off my theory list of being in the 10s. And then we hit Extreme Force with Saryuja being here. Electromite is oddly missing from the announcement. Do they plan to hit it that hard? I don't think they'll hit it too hard, being one of the newest sets. But, at the same time, it's surprising not to be revealed as a chase card yet, either. And a lot of people are saying they think the Mech Knights won't be in here, and uh, I, I'm really, really looking at a lot of these secret rares from Expo. Expo had a ton of amazing cards. What'll end up in there and what won't? It's, you, you got a lot of options and you got a lot of trading to do, both trading away cards and trading for cards, if you want to be on top of your game. Evenly matched. It, by the way, it's all speculation, as I've said in the past few market watches. You're speculating on what will be in there or not. Always trade wisely and with your own big brain plays, as Gage would say. Evenly matched at 52 already, a nice drop off for market price. Everything basically just tanked $10 and not a ridiculous amount. There was no panic selling during this time, and uh, it's, it's pretty crazy to see. Uh, I think it will continue to trend downwards, but also stabilize until the WCQ, and that's when you'll see the real drop-off. I, I believe I said it best, the show's over once the WCQ begins, and we don't have regionals for a month and a half, and all those players from the WCQ, like 1,800, 2,000 really good players that got their invites are going to start shipping off, shipping off all their decks because they're not going to play until we get more regionals a month and a half later. And so you see about a $10 drop-off on each. 
but all the way down to 48 for Saryuja. And uh, that's pretty impressive overall. I'm, I'm pretty happy with the instant decline of that. And I feel like it will further do it, but there's going to be a point it stabilizes pre-WCQ. So it's up to you when you want to trade yours off. If you're not playing in the WCQ, I mean... What, what you doing with these cards? You got Doolin Book, my dude. But of course you want to play in real life with your friends. So just kind of calculate on your own. Are you buying Megatons? Are you just going to not bother and keep these? Only you guys know the answers personally to these questions. And uh, it's up to you if you want to trade off these cards right now as they lose value. And finally, finally, I contacted TCG Player and said, yo... Yo, this, this hasn't been updated in a couple months. Your featured sidebar. I like to see what's trending on TCG Player and what you feature. And uh, it's been a couple of months. Where's my free content to talk about a card that's trending on your uh, your page here? And they were like, oh, oh yeah, that, that looks like it hasn't been touched in three months. Well, finally, they've gotten back. And uh, Allure of Darkness, a card that I've actually suggested heavily to trade for. Uh, out of the structured deck, the, I would be getting these now as they will eventually go up is on their trending at 255 But another card that I actually thought of from uh, layer also is Lilith I think Lilith is a good pickup overall uh, Being able to search any trap will have multiple decks I actually saw a really degenerate chain burn deck and this no doubt is better than backjack and chain burn So there's there's one little buff in the the wrench, but like you really 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 want to consider a card that can search any three of trap guaranteed so some some food for thought but definitely i i like that allure is their featured card it gives me a little more confidence in myself and my suggestions but what did you guys think of today's market watch some some crazier buyouts some some crazier buyouts here but at the same time it's actually oddly enough Oddly enough, understandable with Gishkis. It's it's weird. It's so weird, but it's understandable. Thanks for watching, everybody. Hopefully you enjoyed this one.